and we welcome you to the 2022 CCCAA Men's Soccer SoCal Regional Playoff. I'm Ryan Osborne, joined by Joseph Pavlenko and RJ. Connie off go. to. Hey, you know what? I was going to let you go with it, but he is over to our right. Big thank you to him for helping us get on the air as we get set for some soccer here this afternoon. And it's Fullerton College taking on Cuyamaca here, live from Fullerton College. And both of these two teams looking to get themselves to the next level. Very simply, Cuyamaca, to get to this match, they had to win against Cyprus. They went on the road from all the way down near San Diego over to Cyprus and beat Cyprus in the second overtime. They got a goal to go across in what was a thrilling finish in which Cyprus had a goal beyond the goal line and parried away, and Cuyamaca, less than 25 seconds later, was able to get themselves on the boards, and it allowed them to get here to face Fullerton. So we take a look at the starting lineup, so we start things off with the visiting Cuyamaca Coyotes. In goal, they will have Joel Baiza, joined by Dylan Lizarrazo, and they'll be joined by Robert Somerville and Hugo Plasencia. Eli Elijah Martinez with Ismael Reyes Pineda and Angel Delgadillo with Jose Perez Munoz, joined by Jason Donlin, Giovanni Velazquez Varela, and Cole Wojtkowski. That's the starting 11 for the Cuyamaca Coyotes as we are underway live here from Fullerton, California as the Fullerton Hornets take on the Cuyamaca Coyotes. Ryan Osborne, Joseph Pavlenko here on the call as Fullerton College tries to take it along the far touchline to start and they will end up turning it over and a throw-in comes up for the Coyotes. Deep toss in, looking over for Velasquez Varela, goes over top of him and it will go into the awaiting foot of Estrana. Jose Estrana, a first team all-conference selection for these Fullerton College Hornets. Ends up moving things forward. Coyotes will take over and get a very quick throw in. So, so quickly, RJ has to deal with a few players having to come over towards his camera and he keeps his line. As we move forward with Cuyamaca getting the ball, trying to move up the left side, gets over to the touch line. Perez Munoz down the left hand side. They try and play it through and it will go all the way to the end line and go out for a goal kick. Starting lineup for Fullerton College, we mentioned the first team all-conference selection, Jose Estrada. Right in front of him on that back line will be Oscar Vega, joined by Cooper Clark and Angel Seviano. Jazzy Zavala with Misael Gonzalez, who is the Orange Empire Conference MVP. Cesar Zamora with Daniel Gutierrez and Khan Hanada, in addition to Luis Chavez Esparza and Kevin Manzo. Cuyamaca trying to get things forward and ending up hitting the deck will be Jay-Z Zavala. And, Jav and Zavala will end up getting an elbow towards the face area. Ends up being a foul called on Cuyamaca. And it will go the other way. Now, if you're watching online, you'll notice both of these two teams. Uh, for the most part, you're going to see Fullerton College in the navy blue uniforms going from left to right on the other side for the Coyotes. They'll be in the very Argentina-like kits as they will be in white predominantly with the sky blue stripes down the center. Cooper Clark is going to take over, tries to boot it down, goes level, ends up onto the foot of Cesar Zamora. Zamora, quick liner, near side, looks for Daniel Gutierrez. Gutierrez on that back line trying to get it over to someone, does find someone eventually, and it goes back over to Zamora. On the right-hand side, Fullerton College trying to push forward as Khan Hanada ends up seeing that one go out, and it will be a throw-in coming up for the Coyotes. Coyotes playing it out the back for the moment. Bean gets tipped away, and the Hornets will take over. Hornets move it up with Chavez Esparza. Chavez Esparza now looking for someone, finds Zamora. Zamora getting around two, getting around one more, and the Coyotes will take over and look to run. On the counter, here go the Coyotes. Taken over by Cooper Clark right at midfield and finally scooped away onto the foot of Zamora. Little three hopper going to be brought up by Daniel Gutierrez as he steps in front of it. Both teams kind of feeling each other out in the early going. Here comes Zavala. Zavala down the middle and he tries to set something up for Kevin Monsell. 
but it goes off of Manso and will drop down into the awaiting arms of the goalkeeper, Joel Baiza. Cooper Clark shutting that one down, and it's going to be a throw in on the far side for the Coyotes. Jose Estrada over to our left, the six foot three, 215 pound freshman out of Fontana, California, one of the best goalkeepers in the entire state of California. At least that's the overall feedback you'll hear from a lot of the coaches around Southern California if you talk to them about his impact that he's had for Fullerton College. Left-hand side, Coyotes trying to bring it forward. They will end up seeing that one taken away by Chavez Esparza. Chavez Esparza looking for someone, ends up finding Zamora. Zamora right down the middle of the field in front of Delgadillo. Delgadillo, Chavez Esparza, and the Hornets are able to escape. So out the back line go the Fullerton College Hornets, coached by Greg Avilas. Trying to get his team into the second round of the playoff once more. One of the big things for these Hornets is that they were able to get a really nice seating by way of their conference championship and their overall out of conference schedule. Gutierrez on the takeover with the right foot. Instead, it gets picked over to Gutierrez once more by way of Hanada. Hanada, six foot defender out of Troy. And we'll see a foul going against Angel Seviano. As hitting the deck there was Ismael Reyes Pineda. So if you're watching online, you see going into the fifth minute here of action between Fullerton College and Cuyamaca. Both these two sides kind of stopping for a moment as Jason Donlin is getting set to approach the ball. Little talking to there by Angel Delgadillo, or excuse me. Yeah, it is Angel Delgadillo with the head official as we get set to restart play. Delgadillo watching on, talking with Jay-Z Zavala for just a moment. Now to the captain, Elijah Martinez. Martinez. Looking for someone, he's got a goal and two assists. Scooped over to Hugo Placencia. Placencia on goal! And that will end up being caught there by Estrada, and he will take over and allow everyone to move forward. So once again, Estrada gets on the board. He's got his first save of this match, and Cuyamaca opens up at least a little bit of that score sheet, not necessarily getting on the scoreboard, but getting themselves an opportunity to get a shot on goal. Left-hand side will be brought over to Robert Somerville. Somerville over to Delgadillo. Delgadillo with some room to run. He's got a person over to his left and ends up scooping it too far in front of Jose Perez Munoz. That's a really good player to get it over to as Perez Munoz this season has been excellent, leading them in scoring with 30 points overall, 11 goals, 8 assists, and 4 game winners. He has been a stalwart in this lineup. And it has allowed for Cuyamaca to have that person that they can rely on whenever they need someone to get on the scoreboard. Estrada on the goal kick. Sends it high off of Delgadillo. Delgadillo will see that one get dropped down. They try and play it off to the left. Instead, it gets picked off and taken away by Kevin Monzo. Monzo looking for Misa. Misael Gonzalez sees that one go out, and it will be a throw in for the Coyotes. Fullerton Collins, you're going to watch for them offensively to really try and get it over to Misael Gonzalez. He led them in scoring this season with 29 points, 12 goals, and 5 assists. A lot of the offense went through his side, and he has the ability to finish when Fullerton College needs. Throw in far side for Fullerton just past the midfield mark. Popped into the air. Little battle there, trying to gain control where the Hornets, but instead it's a takeaway as Seviano is going to get called for a foul at midfield. Hitting the deck there will be Velasquez Varela. Velasquez Varela asking for a little bit more. Doesn't end up getting the opportunity to see a card go up, but it will end up stopping play for a moment. A 
as Jason Donlin will get the opportunity to move it. Elijah Martinez with the ball. He will scoop it over to Somerville. Somerville back to Delgadillo. Delgadillo one on one with the captain of the Hornets. Cooper Clark scooped up towards the middle. Taken over on the header by Kevin Monso as he gets back defensively. Monso, you'll see him very active going from side to side as Misao Gonzalez takes advantage of a loose ball. We'll send it over towards the right side. Trying to find someone looking for Oscar Vega. And it is too far in front of him. And Joel Baiza is able to not only take it over and take possession, but slow this speed and pace down. So once again, Ryan Osborne joined by Joseph Pavlenko behind the controls as we watch Cuyamaca and Fullerton College going to battle here directly in front of us. Joe, when you take a look at both of these two sides, neither team really able to take control, and the feeling out process continues. Uh, yes, definitely, and I think we've already seen what uh, the Coyotes did a few days ago, which is Fullerton made an attempt at a goal, and then the Coyotes immediately came back and tried to uh, show them they could do it as well, and that's how they ended up taking the game against Cyprus a couple days ago. Yeah, and you mentioned that that was only 28 seconds after Kuyamaka had an opportunity on the goal line, or excuse me, Cypress had an opportunity on the goal line, and yet the Cypress Chargers just weren't able to knock one through, and Kuyamaka decided to go to counterattack immediately, and it worked out. Gets them into the second round. As this floating through ball will go over towards the left, Daniel Gutierrez has had to be really active so far. Ends up getting to that ball in time. But yeah. I was going to say, it, lo it looks like something Fullerton is going to have to be mindful of today, and, and I wonder if uh, 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 the coach gave the players the talking to of uh, watch out for them on the recovery. They don't, you know, they, they go out there, they pick up the trash, and they don't, you know, let it go by them. That's the thing. You talk about Coach Greg Avilas. He ends up getting the Orange Empire Conference Coach of the Year, and he mentioned to us before that when you take a look at this not only Orange Empire Conference, but Southern California overall, you'll notice that a lot of these teams have the really good ability as opposed to other teams around the entire nation. Almost every team in Southern California is able to counterattack really well. And if teams like the Hornets, as this one is played through and goes past the end line, teams like the Hornets can't keep up with that counterattack, you're going to have problems, not just in conference, but also in the postseason as well. This ball goes through, goal kick coming up for Fullerton College as we kind of enter towards the 12th minute here of play between Fullerton College and Cuyamaca. Ball off to the right, it goes to Hanada. Hanada looking for someone, ends up seeing it go towards the touchline. Battle there as Vega ends up getting a little push and it will end up being a foul. Well, Joe and I activate, making sure that the equipment is okay. Defense mode activated at the broadcast booth. <laughs> Not the first time that Fullerton College and KBPK have been here for a Fullerton College soccer playoff matchup as Fullerton College ended up playing Bakersfield a couple of years ago, 2019. And we were here on the coverage for that. That was a busy day. We had soccer with the men's soccer at Fullerton going on as well as a couple other things. As the clock will stop here for an injured player. One of the things that you'll notice when an injured player ends up hitting the deck as there was a yellow card also shown, looked like for a moment it went to Kevin Monsell. We'll get some clarification on that in just a little bit. But when you see those stoppages, it's kind of tough to be able to differentiate whether or not it's going to just be a clean free kick coming up or they have the opportunity to stop the clock. Usually what you'll see is they look at the timekeeper and give that X sign to be able to say, hey, you know what, clock will stop here. Now you have a chance to reset where everything needs to go in the score sheet. Right, and at this level of soccer, it's different than professional. It's something you had to explain to me prior to this broadcast, not knowing that there was no such thing as stoppage time. They just stopped the clock. They do. That's one of the things in the NCAA that people don't really 
necessarily know the NCAA, NAIA, and the CCCAA, all three of those levels and organizations have it where it is a true 45. So the stoppage of the clock will allow for those injury times, those substitutions, and also goal celebrations as well. And you keep that clock going. And hopefully we don't have too many of those today. It already, <laughs> we are about 13 minutes in and it already looks like this might end up being a physical game. That's the thing, you mentioned that we've already seen four different fouls. We've seen one yellow card being handed out, one guy booked, and a goal kick coming up here just a few moments ago. Fullerton College with an excellent chance there as Chavez Esparza was given service over towards the right. Vega off to the right, that will go out. Vega once more goes off of him. They're going to say it's a Cuyamaca throw in. That brings up Jose Perez Munoz. Perez Munoz sees this float up, goes off of Delgadillo. Delgadillo fighting two, fighting three, finally gets fouled. And it will be Khan Hanada who ends up getting called for it. You mentioned the physicality between these two sides. It looks like Fullerton College also committing to the fact that they are going to be physical. They're going to go up for those challenges and force Cuyamaca to have to play through two or three guys, even if it means that the ball is going to stop and get played through for a free kick. They're going to allow for that to happen as long as the Coyotes don't really get an opportunity to play the offense that they like. Here's service inside the box. It still stays, clings around. Volley's there for a moment and finally cleared away by Angel Seviano. Quick counter here, Misael Gonzalez. Gonzalez looking for a chance to get away from one. Now pokes it over to his left, has a chance. It goes off of Chavez Esparza and the Hornets keep continuing with it. They have possession, far side it goes to Manso. Manso trying to find someone towards the middle and it will end up finding the foot of Zavala. Zavala, now to Hanada. Hanada on the inside, it goes over to Chavez Esparza. It will float into the air and finally rotates its way over towards the sideline where it will get on out. So a very dangerous chance there for Fullerton College ends up going awry, and they will end up seeing this one go over to the Coyotes off of the throw in. And here we go, Fullerton had a bunch of people on their attacking third of the field, and we see immediately the Coyotes get the ball and send it back to Fullerton's side. That's one thing that Fullerton College's back line, while they have been good, Lots of first team and second team all conference selections. They have to be able to be wary of that as they turn around and say, you know what, there's a lot of guys in the vicinity. You have to keep your head on a swivel and make sure that you mark them. Here's Vega. Vega winning a free kick, or excuse me, a throw in on that right hand side. Lots of wind here in the city of Fullerton, gusting at a shade over 20 miles an hour. That's going to be a throw in coming up for the Coyotes in the right corner. Kind of tough to see, but overall in general, both of these two sides very committed to being physical, very committed to getting the ball up, uh, up the field as quickly as possible. Well, and you talked about it, Fullerton's both teams actually gonna make the opponent earn the goal. And once you're this far, you're out of conference, you're making it a run at a state championship or whatnot, you, you don't want to give up the easy stuff, right? You want to make your opponent earn those goals. That's the thing, when Fullerton College talks about earning goals, they really haven't conceded all too much. In general, just giving up 16 goals against for a goals against average of .76. Once again, that is less than one goal per match that they are averaging giving up which is sensational in Southern California. Swung over towards the right as Fullerton tries to play to an advantage, but they end up seeing that one go over towards the left to Cooper Clark. Clark is going to bring it down to Estrada. Estrada says, you know what, let's swing it out as quickly as possible and it will end up going out. The wind didn't hurt, help that one at all. You can almost see the ball come to a stop and just go sideways. As you can hear in the background there, as the wind hits our microphones, it is just as gusty, if not more so, for these athletes here today. And any of those balls that go into the air, we have seen the ball kind of stick there and not really have that same carry that we're used to here at Fullerton College. 
Misael Gonzalez. Misa will find someone over towards his left in Monzo. Monzo, Misa going towards the middle, looking for service. A liner gets poked up into the air. Brought down by Travis Esparza. Here's a chance, a liner that just goes wide. Jay-Z Zavala tried to hit it off the volley and it ends up missing the net. Top right corner by maybe a half a foot. Fullerton oh so close to opening up the scoring here, but it will stay at zeros. Delgadillo slipping for just a moment. Vega strips him of the ball. Vega turning around. He's got a chance to bring it back over to Vega. Luis Chavez Esparza with him. They try and go give and go too many times and they end up getting caught. Now to Delgadillo. Delgadillo near the touch line, ends up going past the camera and Khan Hanada is able to make the stop there. Fullerton College getting set to bring in three. Sergio Ibarra in addition to Joseph Espinoza and they'll be joined, it seems, by Diego Anaya in just a few moments. Delgadillo right in front of us, watching on as this will go all the way back to Jason Donlin. Donlin, very tall, sophomore for this team at Cuyamaca as Misael Gonzalez takes it back. Gonzalez getting pushed off the ball and finally gets it taken away, but the Hornets stand tall with Cooper Clark. Clark, the captain, looking for someone Tries to bring it towards the middle. Can't get service into the box and gets that one taken away. Backspun floater looking for a through. Was Velasquez Varela and Varela can't get to it in time. Hornets whiff on that one for just a moment. That's going to go right past Jay-Z. Little scooper, left-hand side. Velasquez Varela. Getting around Gutierrez, trying to get past him, but Gutierrez, nice job. Turning around, the center back, six foot, uses all of his frame to be able to take possession of that one, boxing out his opponent successfully. Misael with a liner, goes back, back to Donlin, and it will end up being stopped there, as it will be a handball that goes against Cuyamaca. Clock continues, going towards about the 21st minute between Fullerton College and Cuyamaca. Left-hand side, it will end up going off of a Coyote towards the touchline, getting around Clark for a moment. It's going to be a Fullerton College throw-in. With the throw-in, it's going to be the substitutions coming in for both sides, three and three. So once again, it's Espinoza coming in, in addition to his teammate Sergio Ibarra, and they will also be joined by Diego Anaya. Coming in for Cuyamaca, Diego Barragan, in addition to Alessandro Cueva Luquez. Elijah, Mar Elijah Martinez stays out there. So just two substitutions on the other side. Bumped up. Played now to Baragan, who just steps onto the pitch. He will end up finding someone. Popped into the air, high floater. Baragan, back for it. Cooper Clark battling with him. Both guys getting the elbows up, but keeping the ball in front of him is Cooper Clark, and he's able to take it away. Little bouncer for Elijah Martinez. Now to Delgadillo. Delgadillo looking to get away from pressure. Finds Perez Munoz. Little liner looking for through on that right side, but not connecting are the Coyotes. That's one thing, Joe, when you take a look at both sides, you were talking about the win, but it seems like every time both of these two teams try to play the ball through, nothing's connecting. Yeah. Sir. 100%. We had those uh, couple whiffs a little bit ago, which is kind of funny for us out here at the field because the wind almost completely died down and maybe the players were expecting that little bit of extra lift on the ball and it just wasn't happening, which is why some of the headers or some of the 
attempts to uh, bring the ball under control were just a little short. High floater. Coyotes taking back possession after Fullerton College had a couple of dangerous chances. This time, however, it goes right to the awaiting foot of Diego Anaya. 5'11 forward, gets that one stripped from him. He comes back and is able to be there in time. However, Delgadillo with a quick little tap up into the air, he's able to get that ball back and float it forward. Fullerton very, seems, their back line seems very comfortable with the ball this deep into their half of the field. Luis Chavez Esparza looks over at the bench and says he needs a injury sub. So what that means for both of these two teams is that you don't have to wait for a dead ball. Upon an injury sub, the person coming in can replace that injured player immediately. So Fullerton College is able to get in the substitution. And Sergio Ibarra watches on as coming back is Jay-Z Zavala. Diego Naya looking on. Misael Gonzalez once again, 29 points leading the Hornets. Had an excellent season and was just really able to lead the Hornets not only offensively but also in the clubhouse as well. Got to talk to him on the Coaches Show earlier this year. In fact, just a few weeks ago, he talked about having the ability to be able to lead the Hornets as a younger player, but yet having those opportunities thanks to Coach Greg Avilas and Coach Castellanos as well. Current score out of town, 54th minute over at Cyprus. On the women's side between Fullerton and Cyprus, it is 1-0, Cyprus with the lead. Big thank you to Corey Nalen for providing that as Fullerton College takes this one away. There's Espinoza looking for Misao. Misa with a chance, and it goes just wide. Looks like it's going to be a corner coming up for Fullerton, but Misao Gonzalez, oh, so close to opening this one up once again. So Fullerton once more with an excellent chance, just not able to get that one into the frame. And it will be a corner kick coming up. You see everyone in that right-hand corner. A lot of fans joined over there by the benches as well. Ball in, goes up into the air. It's going to be a corner kick once more. Everyone amassing inside the 18, awaiting the word from the official for the moment that they can go. Ball start, how many yards back, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're going for the 15 and awaiting word from the official. Here's the chance. Ball floated up into the air. It's still there, volleying oh. around both sides, trying to find it. Here's a chance. Misa off the volley, and it's going to spin away and get all the way out past the end line once more. That volley would have been dangerous if he was able to make solid contact on that. Ends up getting blocked, and once more a chance for Fullerton College with a corner kick opportunity. This will be their third of the match, and third in the last, oh, we'll say minute and a half. <laughs> uh, let's go with that. <laughs> Espinoza, left-footed. Little backspun floater, it's inside the box. Double chance there for the Hornets off the second opportunity. It gets kicked away. Nice job on the clear there by Diego Bar Barragan. Rolled too many R's on that one. At least you can roll the R's. <laughs> As Hoel is able to take possession and he will end up slowing things down. I'm sure that clearance felt real good for the Coyotes to get the ball out from being that deep into their side of the field. That's one thing for this Coyote squad. Whenever Fullerton College has had those chances, they have done a very good job of making sure there's no second chance opportunity for Fullerton College. So while they do get those dangerous spots, they just haven't been able to get another opportunity at the frame, or at least a clean one, thanks to how well the back line 
of Cuyamaca has been able to clear this ball away. Nice one-two touch. It ends up going over to Jose Perez Munoz. Perez Munoz looking for Barragan. Barragan looking for a teammate. Can't find it. Gets deflected. Goes over to Elijah Martinez. Martinez now to Delgadillo. Delgadillo chopped over. Ends up finding Donlin. Donlin, high floater, bounces far side, gets past Clark. Here's a chance for the Coyotes on the inside. It goes off of Clark and out. That'll be a corner kick coming up and the first of this match for the Coyotes. So it's, Coyote, it's the Coyotes' turn to show us what they can do with the set piece. You'll see in just a moment just how well Fullerton College listens to Jose Esparza. As far as the directing traffic and allowing for Fullerton College to have the proper spacing. Here's the chance, high floater, Coyotes inside. It will end up landing right past the foot of Cueva Luquez. Cueva Luquez on the inside. Here's Esparza having to watch this one go by him. Estrada, another chance. Finally cleared away by the Hornets. Three different guys had a chance for the Coyotes and none of them were able to get that one on frame. Anaya has it go off of him, same as Ibarra. Another chance here, but Fullerton College is able, or is going to see that one go away from them. As it goes off of Barragan and he will force that one to go out. Closing in on the 30th minute for you, Ryan. Thank you very much, Joe. As once again with the 2022 CCCAA second round of this men's soccer regional playoff. Winner ends up moving on and we'll post the brackets in just a little bit. So that way you can see what both of these two teams are looking for as to who they have the opportunity to play as soon as they end up finishing facing one another. A reminder that Cuyamaca beat Cyprus in the second overtime. Not a golden goal, but they were able to get the goal on the board in the second extra frame. And they were able to keep control and allow for them to move on and face Fullerton College here. As that ball goes out and it will go off of the foot of Jose Estrada. continues to swirl around here in Fullerton. Not an uncomfortable day as we've seen in the past where Fullerton College has these types of very windy affairs and it ends up turning into a very chilly afternoon. Ball ends up hardening up a little bit more and it's tougher to control. But instead it's a nice cool afternoon inside the sun. It ends up being a lot more comfortable as well as Fullerton College tries to go on the counter. They move it up with Sergio Ibarra. Ibarra now finding Anaya. Anaya on the right-hand side. He's got a one-on-one -on -one if he can hurry. Delgadillo is going to come over for the double team. He'll look to get it past two, and that's going to be a, dir or excuse me, not a direct kick, but a foul against Kuyamaka, and the foul will get charged to Cole Wojtkowski. See the extras there for Kuyamaka. Watching on as Fullerton College is going to approach this with Cesar Zamora on the right-hand side. Near the corner, but we'll say about 15 yards in and towards the 18 on the inside. Jay-Z Zavala watching on with Misael Gonzalez. Angel Seviano joined by Daniel Gutierrez up there as well. As both of these two teams prepare for what could be a very pivotal corner kick coming up. Corner kick? Free kick? Or excuse me, free kick. Thank you very much, Joe. As that is in the corner, in our blind spot somewhat. As that will end up going off of a defender. And now it will be a corner kick coming up. They heard you wanted one, so here it is now. <laughs> 
This is the fourth corner of the game coming up for Fullerton. Right hand side. Inside the box. You got Gutierrez, Seviano, in addition to Anaya and Zamora as well. Let's go Fullerton, the chant from the bench in behind us. As the Hornets try and get themselves on the board or open up the score in here, here's a double header, a chance inside. It's going to get floated back over towards Gutierrez. He has a chance and it is blocked. Cooper Clark into the air, he'll sky it away. Hornets try and take control right at the touchline. They do so with Ibarra. Ibarra working against two, trying to earn another corner kick coming up, but they will end up seeing a throw in. So the Hornets getting really good chances off those corners, but just not able to get the second chance opportunities that they would like. Kicked away, here's Khan Hanada. He's going to go for it, and that's going to sky up and away. Just got under it a little bit, and that ball sails out. That's the shot that you take just to keep the other team's keeper on their toes. We gotta go, we gotta go! We gotta go! There's Donlan. And a Paragan. He's in front of two. Poked away from him, goes out. Last touch by Kuyamaka. Off the header, it goes to Ibarra. Ibarra trying to push towards the middle. Ibarra can't get to it in time. Beautiful slide there by Cole Wojtkowski. Khan Hanada gets it away, and he's able to get it past two different people successfully. Here's Ibarra. Ibarra looking on that far side, trying to get it over to Espinoza, but it's behind him, and a throw-in coming up for the Hornets. So on that front line, you have Anaya joined by... Gonzalez, in addition to Espinosa. Out there joined by Ibarra. Khan Hanada on this near side of the pitch, calling for it. And it ends up being Misael, who looks for a chance to float it over. You can hear Coach Greg Avilas calling for a press there for Fullerton College, looking for a lot of extra pressure. Now to Cueva Luquez. Cueva Luquez down the middle, gets pulled from behind and almost saved there for a moment on that far side of the field by Lisa Zarro, or excuse me, Lisa Razo. But it will end up being a goal kick coming up for Fullerton College. As in just a couple of moments, Luis Chavez Esparza will re-enter. Penny going up on the other side for the Coyotes as they'll get set for their own substitution. Getting towards the later stages of this first half as Gonzalez has it tipped off of him. It goes off of a Coyote and it will be a throw in coming up. Re entering is Velasquez Varela as he's going to end up bringing Diego Barragan. Off the pitch. So Velasquez Varela, who had a really nice opening 20 minutes. Lots of impact, was able to get the spacing that he needed and also help produce some quality shot opportunities for the Coyotes, including their first shot on goal. Now re-enters. Throwing successfully, gets over to Anaya. Anaya going all the way into the corner. Anaya trying to get away from two, ends up getting dispossessed by Clark. And Clark will see a very deep throw in on the far side. There's Clark off foot. Chased away, Seviano into the air. And it will be caught there by Joel Viza. Delgadillo trying to one touch it, ends up going past him and out. Ball goes down off of Cuyamaca on this near side. Past the touchline, it goes off of Perez Munoz.
right side. Both of these two teams, we saw it in the early part of this first half. Feeling out process, then one team dominated possession. That was Cuyamaca for a solid five to six minutes. Then all of a sudden it turned around and found the Fullerton College Hornets for a lot more opportunity for the next 15. And after that, neither team has really been able to take control here. Both teams kind of residing in midfield lately. We'll say the last eight or so minutes, Fullerton College having a lot more opportunities to be able to create on this right side, but they just haven't been able to get inside the box like they would like. Go. Corner kick coming Go. up for Fullerton College. Fullerton calling out a play. Giving, getting an opportunity to go to a specific set that they would like. Isaiah Gonzalez taking a seat for Fullerton College. Near side corner. Fullerton tries to go low and end up getting a double header of opportunity, but they see that one go off of, it looked like Espinoza and it goes directly past the end line. Here's a chance for Alessandro Cueva Luquez. Cueva Luquez, now to Velasquez Varela. Velasquez Varela at the right side of the 18. Gets double team, trying to work away from two. Gets that one taken away for a moment, and it will be cleared away. Chavez Esparza sees this one go into the air, and that ball is going to go on to Berkeley. Heading towards the 40th minute between Fullerton and Cuyamaca. Fullerton College Hornets and the Coyotes, there's a chance. Goes off of the deflection as Delgadillo has some words for Estrada right after he's able to make the save. Delgadillo trying to get into the head of one of the best keepers in the Orange Empire Conference and in Southern California as well. But Estrada is able to not only make the save, keep possession, and Fullerton College is able to work forward. However, it's finally taken away by the Coyotes. A little bit of back pressure. Here's Delgadillo. Backspun floater. Ends up getting past Gutierrez and Velazquez Varela. Will end up going against Daniel Gutierrez, the center back, 165 out of Servite. Goes to Cooper Clark. Clark tries to bump that one down. Gets past him for a moment. And he's able to get back in time. Here's a chance now for Hugo Placencia. Hugo watching on. And it will end up going out. Throw in coming up for the Cuyamaca Coyotes. Once again, they beat Cypress to get here. And now both of these two teams, every single match from here on out, very simply put, win or go home. That's how the postseason is here in the state of California as this one gets sent up. Estrada being told to work fast as Estrada places this one down, one hops it over. It will end up going to Luis Chavez Esparza. Chavez Esparza gets in behind. He's got a chance to move it over to a teammate, gets deflected off of one, and Fullerton College can't get the attack that they would have liked. Robert Somerville. Now to Delgadillo. Delgadillo. Moving back. Finding a teammate. See the ball being worked towards midfield. Extra opportunity here that goes over towards the Coyotes. They'll find someone in Perez Munoz. Far side of the pitch, it goes to Wojtkowski. See the coaching staff for Fullerton College as both teams trying to press. Getting in behind is Varezkas Varela. Varezkas Varela with a shot and a save. High floater on the left-hand side will be cleared away, and finally it ends up getting to midfield. An excellent chance there for the Cuyamaca Coyotes. 
And Fullerton College once again relies on their star goalkeeper, Jose Estrada. Fullerton College for a moment, the Hornets thought that there was an offsides on Velasquez Varela, but Jose Estrada, luckily for the Hornets, if you are a Fullerton fan, staying attuned to the pace of play and still going after it. Substitution coming in for both Fullerton and Cuyamaca. Coming in in a moment is Ismael Reyes Pineda. As taking a seat will be Alessandro Cueva Lucas. And on the other side for Fullerton College, taking a seat is Luis Chavez Esparza. And coming on for him is Misael Gonzalez. So once again, the leading score for Fullerton College subs out, but comes back in as the Hornets try and get themselves on the board with just under about a minute and a half until halftime. You can hear in the background Coach Greg Avilas talking to his players, asking them to get to where they need to go as quickly as possible as that ball goes out. Lots of hurry going on here in the latter stages of the first half. Scooted over to Velasquez Varela. He ends up getting fouled, and that will end up being a set piece coming up or a free kick for Cuyamaca. So once again, Cuyamaca here in the first half, right to left. On the other side, Fullerton College going from left to right. Navy blue for Fullerton, the white with light blue stripes for Cuyamaca. Now Delgadillo, Delgadillo with a guy on him. Delgadillo not going to give it up as he finds a teammate. Wisely moves it over to Elijah Martinez who controls well. Misao Gonzalez trying to keep it away for a second. Can he get there? If you're a Hornet fan, he does not. And that will end up being taken away by Cuyamaca. Coyotes move it up. Now Delgadillo. Delgadillo with a lot of room to work with. Delgadillo towards the top of the box on the left-hand side. He's right-footed, so he's trying to get to his dominant foot. Can't get there successfully. Moves it to a teammate. Here's a shot that goes over top. The opportunity for Elijah Martinez is also going to end the first half of play as both of these two sides fight to no score at the half as Fullerton College and Cuyamaca are knotted up at zero. You are watching the 2022 SoCal Men's Soccer Regional Playoff here on 90.1 KBPK. Ryan Osborne joined by Joseph Pavlenko on my right-hand side as the Fullerton College Hornets and Cuyamaca Coyotes find themselves all deadlocked at zero. So once again, when you take a look at both of these two sides, the biggest thing that you'll notice is just the overall change of possession on both of these two sides. You started off with Fullerton College. You look at what they're trying to accomplish. For the most part, they're trying to get themselves off to the wings and then get it towards the middle, just inside, or excuse me, just outside the top of the box and work their offense from there. They try and get it over to Gonzalez because for the most part, he is very good at being able to finish in those areas. He's very good at being at the top of the box and sending a laser inside but they just weren't able to connect as well as they would have liked. A lot of those one touches that they're used to didn't end up receive or being received by the person they were intended for. On the other side for Cuyamaca, it just seemed like every time that they tried to go on the counterattack, it felt dangerous. It felt like they had an opportunity to get themselves into a good position to score, but Fullerton College was able to sniff it out each and every time. So for Cuyamaca and Fullerton, they are still knotted up at zeros all around. And when you take a look at how these two teams got here, once again, we were talking about the leaders for both of these two sides. You started off on the side of the Cuyamaca Coyotes. Jose Perez Munoz, 18 matches, 30 points, 11 goals, and 8 assists so far. One of the things that you notice about him is how well he is able to get himself in a solid position 
to just open up spacing for his fellow teammates. That's one thing that is really important when you're taking a look at this level of CCCAA soccer. What differentiates you from your fellow peers, what differentiates you from your fellow conference players as well, is how well you're able to create spacing for your other teammates, even when you don't have the ball. And we've seen that in the early going for Perez Munoz, is that he is able to be to find possession and find opportunities for his teammates even when he doesn't have the ball with him. On the other side for Fullerton College, we talked about it earlier, Misael Gonzalez being that guy that Fullerton can go to with 29 points, 12 goals, 5 assists in 19 games played, and 14 he has started. He has been excellent for the Hornets and has had a majority of the chances here in the first half for Fullerton College as well. So if you're looking at it from a bystander standpoint, well, 0-0 knotted up between these two sides, and nothing is really going to jump out on the page, or excuse me, jump off the page if you're looking at the overall stats at the half. You're going to look at it and say, okay, both of these two teams, they've had their shots. You're looking at Fullerton with about four or five, three of them being on goal. On the other side for Cuyamaca, they've got three shots on goal and four shots overall. Neither team overwhelming you stat-wise, but both teams having their chances. As Once again, I'm joined by Joseph Pavlenko. And once again, Joe, when you take a look at these two sides, Cuyamaca and Fullerton College, neither of them just really able to establish what they want. No, and they're definitely making each other work for any inch of progression they get going towards their opponent's goal. And you mentioned the Coyotes, Ku Cuyamaca, and them taking advantage of the open space, moving the ball around the field. Fullerton College doing the same thing. When Fullerton College had the open space, they were moving the ball around the field, trying to pull the Coyotes players out of their coverages, create gaps, you know, um, big brain maybe, maybe a little shop talk too much here, but um, you know soccer enough, there's, you know, that magical triangle that you want to keep in going, and that's the entire point of moving the ball around the field that both teams have been doing. So try to get those setups to find the openings, create gaps so they can continue moving downfield towards the goal. That's the thing. You talk about that triangle. It's all about the shape. That's what we talked about with Coach uh, Greg Avilas. In talking to him on the Coach's Show recently, we talked about the shape that his team ends up using. What do they decide to go to when things aren't working? What do they decide to go through go to when they want to dominate an opponent. And he mentioned that his team, if they're playing right, they have the opportunity to move the ball at will. Those one touches, very quick. You won't see them taking a lot of time on possession. You won't see guys thinking about where they're going with the pass. Instead, you're going to see a lot of those quick. Ball goes through, gets to the touchline, one touch back towards the middle, one touch to the sideline, and service towards the middle. Very quick, one, two, three, four, to get themselves extra offense. But when you're looking at Fullerton College so far, they've been able to manage the two or three passes, but it's pass numbers four and five that have been the issue so far. So at the half, once again, we are currently knotted up at zeros as you are watching the 2022 SoCal Men's Soccer Regional Playoff here on 90.1 KBPK. And once again, we want to thank RJ Canonaga. Uh, for joining us here and also getting us on the broadcast. And one thing, Joe, when you take a look at this broadcast, and we have been talking about Fullerton College and Cuyamaca, but you have to look at the Southern California overall brackets. That's one thing. Brackets aren't just made for basketball. You take a look at the brackets here in Southern California. You start things off. Cerritos and Bakersfield, they are playing today. Every single one of these matchups is taking place today. And those final two that you see towards the end of each bracket, each one of those two teams will advance to the state final. So that's not the state final as in those two teams will play each other for the state final, but they will advance to get themselves into the final four teams in the state of California. So once again, Cerritos and Bakersfield, Right below them, Norco and Santa Monica, El Camino, who is one of the best teams in the state of California with a number four ranking going into the state playoffs. They play IVC, Santa Ana facing Mount Sac. And then on the other side, it is Oxnard and Chafee, joined by Palomar, who is the lowest 
seeded team to go into this state tournament. Palomar with Golden West, Fullerton College in Cuyamaca, and then Rio Hondo facing Long Beach. So that does it for the bracketology, the science of brackets, if you will, as you take a look at all the other teams in Southern California. Would that make you a certified bracketologist? You know what? I'll go with that. All right. I got my certification in bracketology from years at the University of I Only Watch Sports. <laughs> we have a lot of fun here on 90.1 KBPK. And speaking of which, we want to promote other programs here on KBPK as we want to take a look at those newscasts that 90.1 KBPK has had the opportunity to be able to put out, put on the air, and also air on Spotify, Joe. It's not just sports on KBPK. No, it's not. We've got, uh, I believe we called them News Bites, right? They're on, uh, you can find them on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. If you search KBPK, um, they're put out from, you know, we're calling this thing Hornet Media. Now that there's some, you know, slight restructuring, we're embracing the new media of media, working with journalism a little more, and, you know, more content to be coming via podcasts and stuff like that. Looking to get the coaches show up there as well as some other great student programming, we hope. That's the thing about 90.1 KBPK. It's not just radio. It's not just the call signs. It's a lot of new media here on 90.1 KBPK. A lot of people, when they think of a radio station, they think in the traditional mindset, okay, you got the one guy with the very deep voice who's going to go on the air and they're going to host their own show and talk about a little bit of music, maybe some oldies, talk about the Rolling Stones or go all the way back to Buddy Holly. And that's where you will find your radio station. But KBPK is innovating the way that you think of a radio station moving into that stage of new media. What is new media to us? Well, it's not just video. It's not just audio. And it's not just multiple platforms. It's combining everything together and giving students the opportunity to be able to go on the air, not just using one medium of going on the air with radio, but getting themselves in front of the camera, behind the camera, producer role, hosting roles, and editing roles as well on 90.1 KBPK. Certainly. I got distracted during that beautiful <laughs> spiel you just went on. I'm going to blame my daughter and her fascination with Winnie, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh for this, but I'm going to say it's quite a blustery day. Continues to be, Ryan. <laughs> you are absolutely right, Joe. And when you talk about the blustering wind here in the city of Fullerton, when you take a look at the athletes and how it has affect them so, affected them so far, we've seen the fact that neither of these two teams are really comfortable putting the ball in the air. Now, on clearances, obviously, you just have to get the ball away from your own goal. That's the main objective. But we haven't really seen them play that high arcing through ball. We haven't seen them really try and move to that ball into space, go catch up type of style that we're used to in Southern California because of the way that the wind has affected everything. Everything on your right going from left to right, you put the ball into the air and it stays up in the air and stops. Very simple. We saw it on a clearance by Cooper Clark in the 17th minute. Ball goes into the air comes to a dead, a dead stop and neither team is able to work with it. So you want to talk about the wind? Yeah, it's not necessarily awful, not terrible, but it's just enough to have an effect. Yeah, e even if you do get that perfect touch on the ball to put it where it should be going, the wind could kick up, like Ryan said, the ball comes to a complete stop. Maybe it goes to the left, to the right, who knows? And then because you sent it up long and high and far, now you're maybe having to clean up some trash because you had a ball go awry. That's the thing. It also takes a kind of a knuckling effect. Like if you want to go to the team that's directly behind us, the baseball team here at Fullerton College, it gets that knuckleball type of effect because the ball goes into the wind, faces a lot of air resistance with very minimal rotation on those types of through balls that we've seen at least so far in this matchup. Not saying that all of them are like that, but in this matchup, from what we have seen, ball goes into the air with few rotation, faces a lot of wind and air resistance, so it's unpredictable because of the way that it's building up air in front of it. 
and it doesn't allow for you to be able to say, hey, the ball is clearly going to go this way due to rotation and expectancy. Instead, science takes over, and Mother Nature says, you know what? I see you making a left. I'm going to send it right. Right. It's almost like the wind here is creating the effect that the World Cup balls from, a, what was that, one or two World Cups ago? Where the ball 2010. Just, yep. 2010 with, uh, if I remember right, uh, the Jabalani yes. was the name of that ball. And that was one of... It's interesting that you mentioned that because there were a lot of scientific studies that were made on that ball specifically because of this same very same effect. You know, you and I got to look at the game ball before this game started. You look at the different textures on different game balls. The game balls for the postseason, little different than what these athletes are used to practicing during the regular season or in practice or even their run-throughs earlier on in the day. Different companies, different also mandates on what texture to put on the ball and also different weights to it as well. Now people will say, okay, well, every single ball is going to be exactly the same. Come on now. At one point, it's just machines putting it together. Well, that's not necessarily true. Different balls have different textures, different weights to them. Even if it's a couple grams here and there, they react differently to how the weather goes. They react differently to what the temperature is. So each and every ball has its own character. So going from one ball in one company to another ball in another company has a different effect on the way that these athletes train. Yeah. And I think the, the back line of Fullerton has done a good job, pretty good job. Well, they've done pretty darn good at adapting to the wackiness of the ball in the air and stopping it before it gets too deep into their third of the field. Uh, Kuyamaka has also dealt with that and done a fantastic job clearing the ball. But in the first half, what we saw, I think a little bit more, was Fullerton getting a little deeper into their third of the field than the Coyotes, I think, would enjoy. And Fullerton College doing that enabled them to put the pressure on and let them get some of those almost scoring opportunities. But like we said, that happened with Cyprus. The Coyotes were able to then counterattack, send the ball up the field at Fullerton College and make them have to deal with that. And I think that some of the hesitation that we've maybe seen with Fullerton College not wanting to press too deeply into the Coyotes' half of the field for fear that a counterattack could catch them off guard. That's the thing, too. You, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that, Joe. When you watch these two teams in that first half, it didn't seem like neither team said, you know what, we're going to press, we're going to attack, and if the other team can't keep up with us, oh well. What you really saw is a feeling from both sides of saying, you know what, I don't want to make a mistake because I feel like if I make a mistake, it's going to be in the back of the net. And both of these two teams were playing in that first half like they didn't want to make the first mistake, and neither of them were able to assert themselves because of it. They were almost like the, the Raptors in Jurassic Park. They're just testing the fences. <laughs> uh, it's great when I understand references. <laughs> I got that one. They, exactly. See, people listening online go, but it's Jurassic Park. It should be a very simple reference. Well, you'd be shocked. You know, we deal with students every day, and every new batch of students doesn't have the same references that we're used to. As we get set for this second half of play as Fullerton College and Cuyamaca gets set for the second 45 here on 90.1 KBPK. Want to thank everyone for joining us online as you watch Fullerton College and Cuyamaca in round two of the 2022 CCCAA Men's Soccer SoCal Regional Playoff. I got very confused for a second. I almost said Fullerton College making the attack. No, they've changed the field. <laughs> they which, have indeed. Which is also worth noting, the entire first half, Kuyamaka going right to left. The wind also moving right to left. So now Fullerton, if that makes a difference, that could be going in their favor in the second half of the game. That's the thing. You, you heard Coach Greg Avilas in that first half at one point saying, OK, where is the wind? Is the wind at our back? No, it's in front of us. Now with the second half going on and the wind being at your back, that's one of the things that you need to realize if you are on that defensive back line looking to get it up to a midfielder is that you have the opportunity to lay that ball up in the air and say, hey, you know what? I'll look at my teammate and say, go catch up to it. 
because that's all you need to do is just float it up there, let the wind take over, and the back line will be at a loss because they'll be thinking, okay, is the wind going to be taking this over? Is the wind going to push it in a spot I don't like? You don't know. Right-hand side, here's Delgadillo gets stopped once again by Estrada. Estrada having a nice afternoon here as he has his third save of the game and he will end up getting the ball back as that ball goes out and it is a goal kick. You were talking about the first half, both teams feeling themselves out. It certainly doesn't feel that way the start of the second. The Coyotes certainly feel like they've came out a little more pep in their step or that they're trying to make some kind of statement in the early minutes of the second half. Here's the issue. If you're Fullerton College, if Cuyamaca decides that they're going to set the pace here in half number two, then all of a sudden Fullerton College finds themselves on their heels, having to chase in this one against a very good running and counter-attacking team. So it kind of limits your chances on what you can do if you are trailing in this one. As Fullerton College pokes this one over towards the right-hand side, trying to catch up to it is Monzo. Monzo chasing, can't get to it in time. And after some heavy pressure by the Hornets, it is finally taken away and moved over towards Gutierrez. Velasquez Varela is going to see this on the right-hand side, trying to keep it in on the slide is Lisa Razo. Ends up going out, and it will be a throw-in for the Hornets. Looks like it's, or it sounds like Coach Greg Aviles is trying to convince those guys to come up, you know, meet the pressure of the Coyotes with some pressure of their own. And again, physical start to the second half. We saw the first half start physical, and I think at a certain point the refs just acknowledged it might be a little bit more of a physical game. Whoa, ball coming at the broadcast table. Ryan ducked it expertly. Fantastic job. It's a keeper in the making over here. That's the thing. At one point, you take a look at the camera, and you say, you know what? I'm going to get this shot. You don't realize that the ball is coming over towards you. Um, at least, what's your take on this, Ryan, while they're setting up? Do you think the refs have just acknowledged this is going to be a little bit more of a physical game, and they're just kind of letting play go and not calling quite as many fouls? Yeah, I think you're spot on with that, Joe. I think that when you take a look at, so far, what we've seen, at least opportunity-wise, from both of these two sides, is that the referees have decided both of these two are going to go into contact. They're going to have those 50-50 balls where a lot of contact is going to take place, and... Very simply, they've kind of looked at both sides and said, deal with it. Corner kick coming up for Fullerton. They try and play it low. Getting another chance. That's going to be another corner. You can see Coach Greg Avilas trying to position everyone accordingly. Cooper Clark is going to rush in on the left-hand side. As the Hornets try and play this one quickly, they find it over to Clark. Now down the middle, here's a chance. Misael gets that one poked away from him. This could be one of those games where the first team to score, they were feeling themselves out the first half. Second half, first team that score could affect them mentally. One team could feel real good. The other team could feel like they're playing from behind. And it, it could almost be a psychological thing, getting that first goal, especially if you get it early in the in the second half, which it seems like maybe both teams are trying to do. Yeah, and when you watch both of these two, the thing that you'll also see here is that, as you'll notice on this attack, Fullerton is going to watch Kuyamaka bring up their back line, have them be a little bit more active, so that way they have those numbers. As this is going to be a throw-in coming up for the Coyotes, up into the air is Estrada, and he will take over. There we go, that ball floats a little of the wind at the back. <laughs> A little bit more predictable, too. You saw Misael Gonzalez try to get to it in time. Ends up getting floated away from him. Now over to Ismael Reyes-Pineda. Reyes-Pineda. Now to Elijah Martinez. Elijah Martinez, right-hand side, going to go over to Lisa Razo. Lisa Razo into the 18, and it will be taken over by Estrada. So Jose Estrada has had to be lively here in half number two. And the Hornets... Kind of watching Cuyamaca assert themselves in the next 45. 
or at least in the early going of such. Yeah, Kuyamaka is definitely seeming like they want to set the pace for the second half. And so it looks like a uh, player from Kuyamaka on that 50-50 ball. And uh, unfortunate, he's on the ground. Hope he's OK. Yeah, and both of these two sides kind of making sure that even though it does play physical, you're not seeing either of them, we'll say, get offended by it. Because we have seen physical matchups in the past, not with Fullerton College and Cuyamaca necessarily, but you see matches where guys go into contact, they go into physicality, they have a tough time being able to differentiate whether or not that's just a battle for a 50-50 or a personal type of thing where you're going into someone just to make contact for the sake of doing so. Neither of these two teams have done that. You haven't seen those kind of get back at them type of contact. Ball near side, goes over towards the touchline. It will end up finding Cooper Clark. Clark floating it into the air. Two different Hornets trying to chase it down. They are able to take possession for a moment. The Hornets keep it, find Misael. Misael, here's a chance, a shot, and it goes in! The goal by Kevin Manso! And the Fullerton College Hornets have taken the lead at 1-0. Manso taking advantage. That is going to be his goal. Thank you to Misael Gonzalez and the Fullerton Hornets in roughly the 52nd minute get themselves on the board and have taken a one to nothing lead. I feel like there's almost a little parody at this game with Mark and Corey. Didn't Corey let us know it was 1-0 when we got our last update at the Cypress game around the 54th, 54th minute? Yeah. Yep. So Fullerton College with a one to nothing lead. And once again, just to recap that, it was just a floating ball by Cooper Clark going into the corner. Three different guys battle for it, one of them being Manso and Ibarra. And once the ball kind of clangs around and gets away to Misael Gonzalez, he ends up finding Manso. And Manso just lines one into the bottom left corner of the goal. And look at what this did to Fullerton College's confidence, the Hornets being much more aggressive than they were before the goal. And they're and then you have Cuyamaca, who look like they are determined to put one back on the board to answer Fullerton College's goal. Ball into the right-hand side. Delgadillo down the middle. Here's a chance it gets cleared away. You hear Coach Greg Avilas directly in front of us saying, hey, let's not worry about goals right now. Let's just play defensively sound as the Hornets are going to try and protect this lead. And yeah, we know that it's kind of a mundane statement. You get a lead, you have to protect the lead as a corner kick is coming up for the Coyotes. But it is necessary for these Hornets to be able to protect that at the moment. It is. Two would be nice, but 1-0 still wins you the game. And you need to work on that defense because a tie doesn't do you anything except make the game longer. <laughs> when you take a look at <laughs> Jose Perez Munoz trying to find a teammate, moves over to Hugo Placencia. Hugo Placencia on the inside, and Jose Estrada is there once more. Estrada has been good for the Hornets, and once again, like we mentioned earlier, a first team all conference selection. Foul coming up as that is going to end up being in favor of Koyamaka. Getting called for it was Cesar Zamora. Seems weird. We've seen a lot more physical plays this game and for this to get called. Yeah. Change of flow in the game potentially. You listen to the official kind of giving the explanation as well. He basically looked at both guys and said, hey, you know what? I allowed it to go on in the first half a little bit more. But here in the second half, going towards the later stages, he's not going to do so. So both teams have to be aware of that. Ref trying to keep control of the game, basically. Not that he lost it, but. 
But nonetheless, you don't want it to get to that stage. And being able to shut it down early on gives you that control that you're talking about. Fullerton College will take over. They bring it up with Angel Delgadillo. A little floater. Nice job to get it over to Sergio Ibarra. Excuse me, that was Angel Seviano. Now back line, it goes to Somerville. Somerville finding someone in Placencia. Placencia will see that one go out. And Fullerton will take over once more. Substitutions being called for by Coach Avilas. Here's Gutierrez. Gutierrez has had to be on it here today for Fullerton College. High pressure. Hornets can't get to it. That was Manso. And Nima Amari. Left hand side. Here's the Hornets on the inside. It goes past oh. Misael and off the volley trying to get to it was Manso for number two. Couldn't get that one. Goes off the side of the foot and will be cleared away by Kuyamaka. Goes over to Clark. Picked up by Ibarra. Ibarra up into the air. And off the clearance, it will go over to Monson on the left-hand side. What an unlucky touch on something that could have given Fullerton College a little more cushion. You mentioned that cushion. I mean, it was Monson once again who had the opening goal for Fullerton. And just ends up having it go right off the top of the laces. Delgadillo, high into the air. Backspun off of two hops. It will go over towards Misa's side. Still up in the air, now headed forward directionally as it will end up being advantage Fullerton College. Ball's going to be placed. Cooper Clark in frame going over towards the Fullerton College bench, having an opportunity to talk to the coaching staff. As of right now, Fullerton is going to end up stacking the top of the box towards the 18. They end up bringing up a high floater back post, headed, kept inside for a moment, and it goes across the frame. And Fullerton will be called for a foul. So an excellent chance there, though tough to see for those of you online as the coaching staffs for both teams getting into it, getting a little bit more animated as this game goes along. Trust us, it was quite the sight, though. <laughs> Ibarra brought down, left for Zamora. Nice job by Zamora to be able to find someone. Gutierrez. And a fake there by Robert Somerville brings a goal kick coming up. Fullerton College, again, doing a great job passing that ball, creating spaces to help move the ball forward. You want to talk about creating space and getting some high pressure. There's a chance there for Fullerton. Oh! They created in a goal. Very quickly, the Hornets end up getting one in. Misael Gonzalez. The celebration on the left-hand side as Fullerton College plays it quickly right off of the throw-in in in that far side corner. And Fullerton's number one goal scorer and leading point getter, the Orange Empire Conference MVP, comes in clutch and makes it 2-0. So now, if you're Fullerton College, you're up two. Now is where you don't let up on the pressure but you really need to embrace, embrace that, I'm going to say, Perry Webster mentality and focus on that defense. Which is exactly what you're going to see here in just a little bit. Josh Espinoza and Joseph Espinoza, both of them going to enter for Fullerton as the Hornets are going to go to a more physical laid-back style, or excuse me, not laid-back, I should say pushed-back style. And they're going to be very content with this 2-0 lead. They are up by two. The brothers get set to join, and they're also going to be 
joined by Diego Anaya coming up in just a moment. We talked to Coach Greg Avilas a lot as this one floats high, goes over towards the sideline. Nice job by Monso to keep that one in. Clark on the inside tries to find someone. Goes off of Monzo. Here's a chance for Clark. And it goes off the top of his boot and will go over to the floor. And Fullerton showing that they have no intention to take the foot off the gas yet. And if you're Fullerton College, I think that's the right decision for the moment being here, Joe. As you get an opportunity to get on the board, two goals in less than 10 minutes, that is momentum on your side. And if you can get one more, you essentially put this one to bed. Here's Misael Gonzalez trying to get over to it in time. Little clearance here, backspun, near side, goes up into the air. Ref showing a yellow. Yellow is going to end up going to Sergio Ibarra as the official ends up talking to Ibarra and saying, hey, you know what? You had a few opportunities. You ended up being physical, but he's not going to allow for excessive physicality to go against Delgadillo. Axel Zamora. Right side, it goes to Delgadillo. Delgadillo gets that one past Clark. Here's Delgadillo on the inside, trying to find someone. It gets intercepted by Seviano. Four different substitutions getting set to come in for the Hornets as they are trying to put this one to bed in the last 15 of this matchup. Not that there are 15 minutes left to go, but there have been a, or there has been a massive swing in momentum in the last 15. Fullerton College with two goals. Misael Gonzalez, in addition to Monso opening up the scoring, as we had to make sure that the equipment was okay. And that clearance attempt going towards the broadcast booth. But Monso and Misael Gonzalez, both of them getting Fullerton College on the board with momentum. Here's a shot that ends up being blocked there by Seviano. Delgadillo is going to retake it over. Right hand side, here's a chance, a shot is blocked once more. Emilio Rosas just checking in for Cuyamaca at the last whistle. All of these lineup changes have me feeling almost like I'm at a hockey game. <laughs> Full line changes. Sean Callahan is also going to enter for Fullerton College. So you have both Espinozas in addition to Callahan as well. Also joined by Diego Anaya. Misael Gonzalez did his part. He ends up taking a seat, as will Manso as well. And they are going to also be joined by Nima Amari and Cooper Clark. Here's a corner kick coming up. And a chance for the Coyotes. It is floated up into the air. Estrada ends up getting a foul on him as Estrada ends up hitting the deck. And if you're Fullerton College, you are hoping for the best for the goalkeeper as Estrada has ended up being one of the best players, if not the best player, for the Fullerton College Hornets. Certainly been active in this second half of the game. And one thing about Estrada is the fact that he has, once again, like we mentioned, been a first team all-conference selection, but also has been directing things for Fullerton College. Like you mentioned, the activity, he goes up. He makes sure that he ends up directing traffic, directing spacing, and has clear communication with his teammates. And if Estrada ends up being out for this one, well, Fullerton College very simply would find themselves in a little bit of trouble because that is one of their best players. 
yeah, on the pitch. Definitely. If, if you're not quite as familiar with soccer, the goalie's almost like a second captain or a second general on the field. You've got your captain, you know, with the armband. He calls shots and things like that. But then once you're in that box with the goalie, his word's basically law. If he asks you for space, if he tells you he's going to dive on a ball, you let your goalie do what he needs to get done to keep the goals from being scored. Jose Estrada, we take a look at some of the backups for him. Hayden Frost has gotten into six matches. 0.73 goals against average in addition to an 8-10 save percentage. So if you're Fullerton College, you're pretty happy with the person who would come in for him. The thing is, is just that mentally for a team is deflating because you know that not only is he the goalkeeper, not only is he one of your best players, but you have all this momentum going for you, and then you turn around and you see that guy that you have been practicing with, gaming with, studying with, making sure that you go to social events with, that person who is your friend, who is your brother, on the field in a lot of pain. It's difficult as an athlete to be able to process that mentally and keep the emotions of a playoff game going. Yeah, like you said, Ryan, you're up 2-0, 2-0, and that is the type of thing that could really take the wind out of the Hornets' sails. Let's hope it doesn't. Let's hope he's all good. He's standing up on the field, so that's hopefully a good sign. And potentially a Corey Nalen hot take right here. Corey Nalen traveling in basketball. Not a fan. People carry the ball, take too many steps. My version of that in soccer, you take a throw in, take five steps down the line. What's up with that? Yeah, and that's that's one of the things as what you'll see referees try to combat that with is you'll kind of look at them and say, okay, we're going to stop the pace of play if we have to, if guys are going to take three, four, five steps up the line just to gain a little bit of a spacing advantage. And it's very difficult for an official to be able to look at a lot of guys and call that every single match or every single time it presents itself in a match because of the fact that you're going to get 20 to 30 throw-ins throughout the entirety of a game. And it's difficult to be able to police all of them. As Fullerton College, well, very simply put, they're going to have to figure this match out without one of their best players on the pitch. It's an unfortunate substitution, and the best thing we can say about it is at least he's walking off the field under his most of his own power. Yeah. Jose Estrada ends up leaving for Fullerton College. Hayden Frost is going to be the one to join for the Hornets. For I think we're seeing now why 10 minutes ago before any goals were scored in this half, why our official on the field decided he needed to shorten up the leashes he gave some of these players. I mean, you mentioned that as both of these two teams start to get towards the end. You see the coaching staffs directly in front of us here in the city of Fullerton. You're going to see a lot more physicality and a lot more chances as this one opens up. Here, here is Espinoza. Espinoza gets that one taken away from him. Now the near side, it goes to Seviano. Here's a chance for Delgadillo. Delgadillo dipping in and out, and it will end up going off of his foot. And a throw in coming up for Seviano. Espinoza has that one go off of him. Kind of peeking in between two or three guys, Espinoza. Now right past him. Going to be a foul going against Delgadillo. Game remains to be a physical one, Ryan. So one thing that one thing that you're hearing from the Hornet coaching staff is the question, how many are you going to allow from Delgadillo? Now, when the yellow card was given to Ibarra on the near side of the field, one thing that the official mentioned is that there were a total of five fouls on Delgadillo. So the next person that got a foul from Fullerton on Delgadillo would receive a yellow from the physical play. Now Fullerton College is turning around and asking for that same type of explanation on why Delgadillo isn't receiving a card yet. Left-hand side, here's Espinoza. Espinoza taking a shot that gets blocked. Espinoza trying to move over to his left foot, scooping it up and out. It will end up going for a goal kick. 
Tried to send that cross into the middle of the box and it just kind of got away from him. Coach Avilas calling for high pressure, asking for them to push up the field. They have the lead and the advantage. They are trying to get themselves on the board once more to essentially ice this one. From our conversation a little while ago with that stoppage, would the wind be taken out of Fullerton College's sails? And it looks like probably not. Yeah, and you look at this team right now. For Fullerton, it just seems like they truly want to be able to get themselves on the attack. Towards the middle it goes. Here's Delgadillo. Delgadillo going to load one up. Gets deflected once and sent wide by the Coyotes. A beautiful chance there for Cueva Luquez. Excuse me, not Cueva Luquez, but Reyes Pineda. And he ends up skying that one off to the right. We're in the 60, I'm just going to call it the 69th minute of play, Ryan. Approximately the 69th because we did have a couple of stoppages, so we have to wait for the official to give us that word. Left-hand side. Liner goes over to Velazquez Varela. As Seviano is going to hit the deck, and this is going to be a booking coming up in just a moment. The official on the field clearly starting to get fed up with the chippiness. <laughs> Can we call it chippiness? Is it too rough for that? <laughs> Just a little bit, but you know what? Just what we were talking about a few moments ago, getting that same explanation of one, two, three, four, five fouls on one person gives a yellow card to the Hornets. Well, the exact same thing is explained to Delgadillo. as Delgadillo ends up getting a yellow card here. As he is given that very same explanation. Looks like somebody tried to have a conversation with the ref and he's not having it. That was Delgadillo. He's still trying to plead his case as to why he doesn't deserve a yellow card. There comes a certain point in the match where you have to realize good, bad, like the ruling or not, the ref is in charge. Just get on with the play. You got booked, move on, and avoid getting booked again. Because that can really cost you because in theoreticals, if the Coyotes are able to get themselves back into this one, tie it up, take the lead, but you still have some regulation or overtime, all of a sudden you get yourself into a situation where you have to be more careful because of a booking. Well, you just have to be able to keep that self-composure moving forward. Keep yourself under your own morals as this will end up being a physical battle that leads to a turnover. Lisa Russell gets the ball over to Velasquez Varela. He's still fighting for it with Seviano. There's a hip check, and that is going to be a foul against Kuyamaka and taken over by the Hornets. And again, as this game continues to be physical, any booking in a game like this limits your options as a player. Because if you can't meet them quite as aggressively, what are you going to do? Luis Chavez as far as is going to enter for Fullerton College. Seviano hits the deck and the training staff is going to have to go out there for a moment. They try and check on him. Superstar Lorraine out there. She has been excellent, which reminds us that this athletic training staff for Fullerton College is one of the best, if not the best, in the entire state of California and the nation as well. Want to give them a quick shout out because of how well they not only communicate with their student athletes, but they also make themselves available to us. They look at us and they say, hey, you know what? This is what we're looking for as athletic trainers. This is what we're looking for with different players when they get into different types of contact or non-contact. This is how we train ourselves to look for certain things to make sure that these athletes have the best opportunity 
to go out there and compete at the very top of their game. And when you want to talk about a few people who do their job very well and to the best of their ability always, Lorena and Juan are fantastic for the Fullerton College Hornets. Fullerton looks like they're trying to put ball well, in. They were trying to put a bow on it. <laughs> they were going ball into the box as Espinoza had a chance there. Con Hanada has that one go off of him and it will end up going towards the sideline. There's a chance that will end up being flipped over towards Zavala. Zavala chasing after it, goes high pressure. Cuyamaca now moving up with Lizarrazo. Lizarrazo looking for a teammate, can't get it over to connect. Espinoza goes right past it. Connolly can't catch up to it. Now a chance, far side, it goes over to Robert Somerville. Somerville on the chase, it will go right past Perez Munoz and out. That's one thing that Fullerton College has also done well today. They have neutralized Perez Munoz for the most part. Again, he comes into this one with 30 points to his credit. But yet just hasn't been able to get the opportunities he'd like. Delgadillo has looked really good in this one as that's going to not end up being a foul going against Kuyamaka. Heavy check, 50-50 ball, leads to the Hornets getting possession. Stepped in front of, wisely picked off by Donlan. Now Delgadillo, Delgadillo on the right hand side, Delgadillo trying to get past Hanada, and he can't do so as that one is flipped out of play. On we continue in this one, close to the 74th minute. That's an approximation once again, as the official scorekeeping is kept somewhere else, not at the same spot that we are. It is kept on an official timer with the referees themselves. And again, when Fullerton was up 1-0, Greg Avilas was asking for the defensive play, hold on to the lead, don't get greedy, they're up 2-0. And this team's spirit animal, again, I'm gonna go back to saying this, because when I think defense of Fullerton College, I think Perry Webster. Their spirit animal needs to be Perry Webster right now. That's the thing, you'll see Fullerton College kind of collapsing more towards the top of the box as this one is floated up and into the arms of Hayden Frost. He's played fifth, or excuse me, 500 minutes, only surrendered four goals and a .73 goals against average, which is fantastic for any starting goalkeeper in the state of California, let alone a backup. That's exactly who you want to be able to trust. Here's a chance on the inside. Velazquez Varela goes down inside the box. The Coyotes ask for a penalty. They do not receive one. That's going to be a throw in on the far side of the field. As the Coyotes not thrilled with that non call. And they are voicing their displeasure on our right. That's the thing. Both of these two sides have their cases to be made on certain 50 50 balls that end up going back and forth. But the officials making sure that there is an equal opportunity for both teams to present themselves. Axel Zamora popped into the air. High floater goes now to Ibarra. Ibarra swings his leg through it. Fullerton trying to clamp down in the last 15. Sent now to Elijah Martinez. Foul against Fullerton College. Martinez. Now to Perez Munoz. Right side looking for Delgadillo. Delgadillo plays it off the right knee. Ends up going to Espinoza. Espinoza takes over. Tries to kick it forward. Can't get it there. There's a liner that ends up going all the way back to Joel Baiza. Hornets take over. Right touch line. Now Sean Callahan. Callahan turns it over. Fullerton College is going to bring on four substitutions. Once again, Cuyamaca fighting for their playoff lives here. 
Espinoza chases after this one, and it will go out. Getting set to check in in a moment. Adsa Salinas, in addition to Manso from earlier, also joined by Aldo Ramirez. Fullerton trying to clamp down here and get themselves onto the next round. All over towards the left-hand side. Espinoza sees that one go too far in front of him. Switching his hips, moving it back over towards the left is Axel Zamora. Ball's going to go out of bounds, and a throw-in coming up for Fullerton College. Five substitutions in for Fullerton. As Khan Hanada is going to take a seat for the Hornets. Five different subs in. We already mentioned a few of them earlier. Ryan Esparza will also join as well. We are in the 83rd minute. That is what the official says. So 83rd minute. Fullerton College. And Kuyamaka. Here's a chance, a shot that's going to go right in on goal, and Joel Baiza will take over and flip it all the way down. Ball goes down onto the foot of Sean Callahan. He's going to float it up for Esparza. Here's a chance for Monzo, and it goes just over top of his boot. Throw in on the far side. You're watching online, watching through the coach's eyes. As directly in front of us, the coaching staff for Fullerton College watching on, trying to get themselves and their team to a win in the postseason. Sub coming in in a moment. Now is Joining will be Alessandro Cueva Lucas. Taking his seat is Hugo Placencia. Placencia sees this one go all the way down towards the far side. It's going to be taken over by Fullerton as a throw in will come up. Both teams fighting for it. They're going to add a little bit of time towards the back half of this matchup. Whoa, I thought you said they didn't do that, Ryan. Well, I've been wrong on occasion. It's uh, but not, not the rule, it's the exception. Exactly. But the thing is, is the reason why you have that is because of the injury that we saw earlier. You have Estrada ending up hitting the deck, having to be subbed out. So you get a little bit of extra time to be able to work with. High floater. That's going to cling around inside the box. Delgadillo trying to catch up to it before it goes out. Chases it all the way down into the corner. Keeps it alive for a moment. And it will end up being a yellow card coming up here. If it's against Delgadillo, he is done, and that is not going to be the case. It is against Fullerton College. You see all the way down into the corner. Guiamaca. And their coaching staff trying to get themselves back into this one. 2-0 is the score. So some fun stats looking at uh, overall between Fullerton and uh, Kuyamaka. Fullerton so far has uh, 41 yellow cards on record this season. Kuyamaka with uh, 29. So obviously both teams favor aggressive play as we've seen all day today. And as the stats even agree to a degree. 
half clearance there by Fullerton College. They can't get it out. Like you said, the yellow cards for both of these two teams have been plentiful, plentiful in the past, but neither of these two teams really getting as many as we have seen in this one. Substitutions coming on for the Hornets in just a few moments. Khan Hanada will rejoin for Fullerton College and possibly Cooper Clark to be determined. Here's a chance on the off foot as Diego Naya tried to catch up to that one. That's going to be a throw in coming up for Fullerton College. The sub coming in. If you're the Kriyamaka or your Fullerton College at this point, as far into the back half of the game is it as we are, do you just adopt the ph philosophy of you're in the box and we're going to, you know, accuracy by volume, we're going to take every shot, or do you wait for that shot you know is going to go into the back of the net? I think that if you are Kuyamaka, the number one thing you have to do is just get shots on. You see the last few minutes that you have ended up seeing your offense try and get themselves past midfield. They have had some issues. They've had some struggles. You've got to get some volume on a backup goalkeeper and see whether or not he can play his line well as this one is going to be skied up and it looks like it wasn't deflected so Hayden Frost is going to retake possession and for Fullerton College they will take it because that's a goal kick. But to answer your question Joe, again, if you're Kuyamaki, you need to get shots on and see if that can create opportunities for you. Maybe you get a rebound. Maybe you're positionally sound and you're there to clang one in off of a carom. But if you're Kuyamaka, I don't think you have the opportunity right now to be able to say, hey, I've got time to be able to set up the perfect shot. If you're the Coyotes, you need to get something going in a hurry. And hammer on that pressure. Yeah, you have to be able to prevent Fullerton College from getting solid chances to move forward. Here's a solid chance for the Hornets with Adsel Salinas. Salinas in the left-hand corner trying to waste a little bit of clock, looking more for possession than anything as this is going to be kicked up and goes right past the trainer's table. And a note, we adjusted our clock with the updated clock from the ref, but ours is still probably an approximation, so. It, it will be an approximation uh, all the way through. What you'll usually see at this level is that the officials will keep the time on their own wristwatches, as you see in every level, but instead of having the scorekeeper at the sideline keeping a time with them, you will see it just be with the official and we have that additional five minutes that we heard being talked about earlier. Here's Monsell. Monsell off to the right-hand side. Monsell floats it up, goes high. A chance there. Pokes up, and we'll go into the Cuyamaca bench. A couple of guys coming in for Fullerton College. Christian Carcamo on the left-hand side. He'll be joined by Devin Villegas. Villegas out of Eastvale and Roosevelt. Fullerton trying to waste a little bit of clock. Here's a chance inside, an opportunity for the Hornets, and it's sniffed out there by Joel Baiza, and he successfully gets it out. You have a very different definition of wasting the clock than I do. <laughs> well, Fullerton, it looked like initially they were going to send two guys towards the corner, which made me think, okay, they'll send it to the corner, try and keep possession, force it in towards the 90, and then have the opportunity to force it to the middle after you waste about... 30 to 45 seconds, but instead it just went directly on goal. Kuyamaka, once again, getting into a sense of having to get themselves on the board. And Fullerton College's back line is having none of it. Yeah, Fullerton, you're seeing a lot of pressure from that back line. They're forcing their wing backs to go outside so that way Kuyamaka can't set up anything with speed towards the touch lines. And right now for Fullerton, it really just seems like the Hornets' back line has held their position really well. One thing that was noted earlier is that you look at Cuyamaca, they get a goal in the first half when they had that excellent chance against Estrada one-on-one -on -one with Velazquez Varela, and this is a different matchup. 
However, Fullerton College getting both of their opportunities here in the second half and burying them both changes things. I'd say they're going to continue, you know, look like they're continuing their winning streak. But like you said, in playoffs, it's win or die, win or go home. So you have to continue that winning streak at this point. Very simply put, either you win or your season is over. And Cuyamaca trying to prevent that here. They're trying to get themselves back into this game. Fullerton College player goes down. That's Seviano. He's going to be on the floor for a second. And Seviano talking to the official, asking why there wasn't a foul there. And he's not going to get the benefit of a call. My two cents. I know it's part of the game. But if you can go down, sit up, and then go, whoa, where's my call? <laughs> really? <laughs> It is all part of the gamesmanship that you see towards the end of a matchup like this. Just trying to get the very pivotal few moments off the clock. Hayden Frost boots this one up towards midfield. Fullerton College trying to close out here. There's a chance brought down by Carcamo. Carcamo. Carcamo once more to Khan Hanada. Hanada on that far side, he'll find Devin Viegas. Viegas is gonna find someone who's offside. Coach Avilas asking for his team to get back and get some pressure as Seviano will lay it all the way back to Frost. Frost down the middle, nice deflection there to get it away by Sean Callahan because that ball was laying right down the middle of the pitch for an excellent chance with Frost all the way towards the top of the box. Wind continues here in Fullerton. Again, nothing too dramatic here, but it does have an effect like we saw in the first half. And Kuyamaka's goalie is almost at the midfield line. There's a chance and Frost makes a save. Cuyamaca with an excellent opportunity. They tried to go bottom left-hand corner, and Hayden Frost, fresh onto the pitch for Fullerton College, is able to be there for the Hornets and get the save. Cuyamaca trying to get themselves on the board. It's turned there by Barragan. Here's a chance on the left-hand side, a shot and a goal! It's in! Giovanni Velasquez Varela! Gets that one to go home, and Hayden Frost covers up the ball to try and waste a little bit more clock as the Coyotes gather and trying to get that ball away. But a beautiful chance there by Cuyamaca, and they have scored. It's now 2-1. Beautiful job by the Coyotes. 2-1, and I'm sure Fullerton is going, ref, where is that whistle? <laughs> I got places to be. We're looking at just under a minute 10 left to go in this one, at least an approximation of it based on the extra time. Now, if you're Fullerton College, you've only got a few more seconds left. You just conceded a goal that will end up being recorded as Giovanni Velazquez Varela from Alessandro Cueva Luquez. And again, right before Cuyamaca scored that goal, you had to have known they had the intent there. Before that set piece back there, that corner kick, I think it was, that then turned into another play, I think a goal kick, and then Cuyamaca countered that. And again, their goalie's coming almost to the midfield line. They are intending to put as much pressure on Fullerton as possible right now. And Fullerton College just trying to get it out of their own end. That ball is gonna be booted all the way over towards the baseball field. And you're looking at just under a minute or so left to go in extra time. Joel Baiza is going to join the other side of midfield. It's going to be a toss-in coming up. This will probably be the last chance for Cuyamaca. A big-time opportunity for the Coyotes. Everyone battling inside the area. There's a warning there by the official talking to a Hornet and Delgadillo as well. Hayden Frost trying to cover. Fullerton College protecting a 2-1 lead. Cuyamaca trying to get themselves back on the board. That ball goes over towards the left. It's still inside the box. There's a chance. It's still there for a moment, and it will end up going towards the sideline once more. Ball goes out. Here's a chance for Lisa Razo. 
goes over off of a Coyote, and that will end up doing it. Fullerton College with the win. The Coyotes with heavy pressure towards the end of this matchup, and you have to give it to Cuyamaca. They absolutely battled and got chance after chance at the end of this one, but it will end up being a 2-1 win for the Fullerton College Hornets over top of Cuyamaca. The Fullerton College Hornets converting on both of their chances in the first, or excuse me, the second half of play, and Fullerton gets the win here, Joe. Yeah, they did, and that last play, I'm sure tension, nerves, um, anxiety, was things the entire Fullerton College team was feeling right there because you needed to stop that attack or else you're going to extra time. You had it wrapped up. You almost put the bow on it 3-0 a couple times. Couldn't do it. Some unfortunate things happened to you, your team. You got unlucky on a couple shots on goal. And then Kuyamaka comes back, scores one, and at the end of the game almost puts a second to tie it up. Yeah, there was a lot of heavy pressure there by Kuyamaka. Just couldn't get it across the goal line in time. And you have to go back to the beginning of this matchup where Kuyamaka had that excellent chance by Velasquez Varela. He goes one-on-one -on -one against Estrada, and Estrada makes the save to keep it at 0-0. Going into the second half, well, none other than Kevin Monso gets on the board for Fullerton to give them the one to nothing lead. And less than 10 minutes later, Fullerton College relies on their number one goal scorer, the conference MVP, Misael Gonzalez, to give them a 2-1 advantage. And it was a goal that surprised almost everyone except Joseph Pavlenko on my right and Misael Gonzalez as they were able to get that one to go across and give them that two nothing advantage. Of course, Cuyamaca just a few moments ago, the goal scored by Giovanni Velazquez Varela, assisted by Alessandro Cueva Lucas. That finishes off the scoring in this one, and that will also finish off our coverage here today. Joe, you take a look at this one. Final thoughts here between Fullerton College and Cuyamaca. You go to that back line that you talked about before this matchup started, and for Fullerton College, the back line was really crucial. Yeah, it was, and it was those counterattacks from Cuyamaca that Fullerton College looked out for. At the beginning of the second half was maybe too conservative. We had Coach Greg Avila. Greg Avila, as we could hear, saying, put on the pressure, guys. We need to not let them dictate the pace of the second half of the game. And then Fullerton College did exactly that, put one in the net, put two in the net, and then kind of controlled the pace of the game until some unlucky things happened for the team. And what that means is Fullerton College gets to continue driving on down the road to these playoffs, and the story continues, and maybe we'll even get an update. Am I gonna, I th I'm gonna call a shot. Coach's show, Greg Avilas next week probably. We'll get a quick update from Coach Greg Avilas and this soccer team, as well as a preview of the Fullerton College football matchup against Mount Sac in the playoff next weekend. All right, now I'm not trying to be Rashawn Haylock here, so I think I've said my piece. <laughs> Any closing thoughts for you, Ryan? Or are we going home? We are going home as Fullerton College gets a victory 2-1 to one, the final as the Fullerton College Hornets get two in the second half and one for Cuyamaca in the closing final moments. But Fullerton College will be moving on, and they will be on to round three of the 2022 men's soccer socal regional playoff so that's going to do it for us we want to thank rj very much for getting us on the air helping us with that camera work as well and also want to thank joseph pavlenko over to my right hand side i am ryan osborne thanking you for joining us our final 2-1 fullerton college with the win over top of cuyamaca you have been watching the 2022 cccaa men's soccer socal regional playoff here on 90.1 KBPK.